What's up guys? Today I have another pen video for you. Um, today I'm going to be kind of doing a quick impressions video on this pen here. Uh, this pen is a Pelican M805 in uh, so solid blue. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that would be the model number. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think this is like a standard run of um of m800s uh I, I figured it'd be an m805 because of the the uh the silver furniture uh and i know they came out with the um the blue the m800 blue ocean uh very similar to this pen here uh this is actually a m600 in uh in blue demonstrator um but in this case this is a solid blue um this isn't actually my pen um this actually belongs to a friend of mine, and recently he somehow managed to spring the nib. Uh, he claims that he didn't do it himself; that uh, you know one of his friends <laughs> grabbed the pen from him while while they were out drinking and partying, and uh, and sprung the nib. But basically, you know, I had never really fixed the sprung nib before, uh, and I think I did a pretty good job on this one. Uh, it was just lifted off the. Oh, it's not gonna focus on it, is it? So, oh, come on. So, I mean, that's how the nib is now. As you can see, it's sitting against the uh, the feed. It was lifted off the feed by maybe like a millimeter or two. Um, and obviously, being lifted off the feed by that much, uh, it was no longer flowing properly. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's not exactly a standard nib. Uh, this pen started off its life as a broad nib. Uh, but now it it was um, it was cut into a reverse oblique. Um, it just happens to be how my friend writes with his pens. Um, <clears throat> when I had first, um, actually, while I'm at it, I actually have a a series of pelicans here, uh, just to kind of show you a size comparison. Um, actually, maybe this would be better. So, you know, from it's not the best shot because it's kind of at an angle, but you can kind of see the size difference. The uh, from left to right, you have uh, the Pelican M1000. Actually, let me just come off the tripod, and you can actually get a better kind of image of it. Yeah, because at an angle, it kind of distorts the uh, the image. But on the left, you have the M1000, and then after that is the M800. Uh, then the third one from the left is an M600 size, and then finally the one on the right is a Pelican 205. Um, you know, it would kind of represent uh, the standard 200 as well as the uh, the M400, which is the same size uh, size as the M uh, M200. Um, when I was first buying my very first Pelican pen, um, actually, oh, it's not handy. But uh, my first Pelican pen was an M8 uh, M600. It was actually the first pen that I had bought that cost a significant amount of money. Uh, I think I paid like 265 for mine. Um, you know, while I was at the store, I actually went to a brick and mortar to, to buy the pen. Uh, I was kind of comparing the different sizes. Um, they didn't exactly have an M1000 handy at the time, so I couldn't really try it out. Um, but I was kind of trying to, to debate between buying an M400 and buying an M600. Uh, my friend convinced me to spend the extra money and get the 600 because, you know, it was a more comfortable size to really write with um, versus, you know, something like the 200, 400 series. The pens, you know, they're do you, you can write with them, no issues, but they are a little on the thinner side and it, it's not the most comfortable pen to write with for a long period of time. Um, but back then, before I got into found pens again, I kind of held my pens like a little strangely, uh, not, not necessarily, you know, in a weird grip or anything, but just the way I held the pen, you know, I was writing with a lot of ball points at the time, uh, so I kind of held, held my pens up at a higher angle. Um, so, you know, like, I used to hold my pen uh, kind of kind of like this, and then write like this, and with pens like the 1000 and the M800, I felt that they were kind of back heavy, and this is obviously with the pen not even posted. Uh, you know, once you take the pen and you post it, then it weighs it makes it more back heavy um, because you know weights you know these caps while they're not the heaviest uh, they don't exactly you know it doesn't ha exactly help the cause when you add that much extra length to the pen um, so I kind of disregarded you know these 
pens with the um, the brass pistons on the back or the metal pistons on the back just because I felt that they were way too back heavy and I kind of prefer pens that are more neutral in weight uh, or maybe even uh, front heavy, heavy, nib heavy. Um, but, you know, over the past two years, as I've been getting more and more into fountain pens, I've actually changed up my grip. So, you know, now instead of actually, actually, let's, uh, let's use this one. Now, instead of holding the pen, you know, at this weird angle, 40, you know, high angle, 45 degrees like this, I actually hold my pens at a much lower angle, uh, and I grip a little bit higher, like so, and... You know, my fingers are more straightened out. Uh, I think this would be considered more of like a traditional tripod grip, uh, more than like the sideways style. Um, and in this case, you know, you can see like the pen is being held up, like, uh, you know, towards the middle of the barrel here. Uh, so all this extra weight that's on the pivot end kind of bends it backwards. But as soon as I, sw so I switch the grip here, now all of a sudden I have more hand contact towards the... Um, I have more hand contact towards where the bulk of the weight is on these pens. Uh, so, you know, it's twofold. One is that I can hold back heavier pens uh, without any major issues because it's still being supported by my hand. Uh, and the second thing is that with shorter pens, it does make it a little more complicated to use. And I, you know, pens, you know, something like an M200, um, I have to, if I hold it by where the section is, I kind of have to like, you know, squish my hand in towards the page uh, to really get the nib to make contact but on the other hand if I want to hold it higher up and have a more relaxed grip all of a sudden I'm starting to run out of pen real estate uh, and in this case you know with smaller pens you know pocket size pens like this I would actually have to post the pen um, but again because the palm of my hand is supporting the pen at such a high area even though the balance point is more back heavy uh, it's still not a major issue <clears throat> In terms of how the pen writes, um, I'm gonna put these off to the side. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, actually, you know what? Before I get too deep into that, I showed you the pens as they were posted. I mean, capped. But uh, let me let show you the size comparison with them uh, uncapped. And I'll kind of get off the tripod again. So, you know, there you can kind of compare, you know, the M200 on the very top. Come on, focus camera. Well, not going to want to focus, is it? Anyway, uh, you can kind of see the size differences with the M200 on the very top, then the 600, then 800, and then finally, you know, the big M1000. Um, <clears throat> in terms of, you know, my impressions on the pen, uh, it's not mine. I had... I. I've only had it for about a week, uh, you know, it took me kind of two days of massaging the nib back into its original shape to the point where I was actually happy with it. Um, I think it turned out pretty well, you know, it writes as smooth as it did before from what I remember the last time I worked on this nib and, you know, no flow issues. I wrote several pages without it, you know, skipping or slowing down in any way. Um, but I don't, I've never actually written, like, I don't really remember how this pen writes, like, completely factory. Uh, so, and, you know, I didn't do this particular grind. I did work on a nib and kind of round out the sharp edges a little bit after it was cut. Um, but by the time I had seen this pen, it had already been sent out to Mike Masayama to get the, the reverse oblique cut onto it. So I don't know how it write, I don't know how it wrote completely from factory. Um, I can only imagine it writes pretty similar to, like, them 1000 nibs. Maybe not as like springy, uh, the M1000 nib, because it's so large and the tines are so long, uh, it writes with a little more bounce than, say, like the 600 nibs or the 200 nibs. Um, but it writes pretty well, and honestly, having this pen um, in my possession and, you know, me test writing with it and everything to make sure everything functions properly after I unsprung the nib, uh, it kind of makes me want to get one. Uh, just just because I feel like I, I, I kind of need one of every pen in every size. Um, wrong order. But uh, I, I think I'll definitely be seeing an M800 in my collection sometime in the future. Um, you know, the M1000 is only a little bit over two months old, and this was a significant chunk of change, so I don't think I'll be buying it anytime soon. But I do really want the Brown Tortoise M800. Um, I kind of wanted it when it first came out, but I was still at that point where I didn't know how I felt about 
how the M800 felt in my hands. <clears throat> so I didn't get it. And now that it's basically discontinued or no longer in production, um, it's it's even more expensive now. So <laughs> I want one, but I don't know if that'll really ever happen without me paying um, you know, an exceedingly large sum of money above what it co used to cost. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, one of the problems I have with a pen like the M1000 is it's comfortable to write with and I really like it, but it's so big that it doesn't fit into any of my pockets. Uh, and in all honesty, it doesn't even really fit into pen cases. You know, I'm a big proponent of using like a leather slip. And, you know, this appendicitis just does not work, no matter how much you want to try and stretch it. And any pen case that you can use with this, you know, I personally stored this in my Visconti 2-pen uh, Dream Touch case. Uh, it's too big for the pocket. Uh, <clears throat> I move around a lot at work. I don't just sit at one desk uh, and, you know, I don't have like a cubicle job or like a corner office kind of job where I just sit at my desk all day and write. So I have to be able to carry around my pen with me. So a pen like this, not very practical. I've actually, you know, and that's the reason why I like the M600 size so much, is because it is easy to carry, but it's still big enough to sort of comfortably write with for long periods of time. Uh, my main pocket, like breast pocket carry, would be this 200 size pen. Um, but once I start writing, like after 20 minutes with this pen, my hand starts to get a little tired. So I don't know, I may consider actually getting an 800 just for kind of a step up, uh, you know, in pocket, they don't, this pen doesn't sit perfectly um, aligned with the, the edge of the pocket. I kind of have to, you know, the pockets I have on my shirts, they're not that long. So this kind of sits at a slant. But at the same time, it's not, it's, you know, it's still not too heavy. And it's still not too long for it to really sit really, really awkwardly in the pocket. Uh, and it is comfortable to hold and write with. I don't know, the balance still feels a little weird. I've, I'm a little undecided. Uh, in all honesty, I may just end up getting one just, you know, f to have one of every, every modern series. Um, but I I'm not sure if I would actually carry it as a daily pen. So yeah, um, this quick impressions video kind of turned out kind of long. Still shorter than my other videos. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.